Before the start of each new season, the teams put their new cars on the track and test them, pushing the development button as much as they possibly can. But how much does a driver bring to that process? Fernando Alonso once famously said he brings seven tenths of a second to it. But is that the case? I've come to McLaren to find out how much the driver actually does. Phil, how much of a part does the driver play in the development of a car? The main contribution of the driver is once we get the car onto the track. So the initial concept of the car, the, the layout, that's done um, pretty much uh, from the drawing board. Uh, and then when the driver gets to the car, when we get it on the track, that's really where their input comes in to describe what he's feeling uh, and the, you know, where he feels that we can find lap time from that car. The driver will have some input into the various control systems and how he's seating in the car but his input really comes when we start running the car. Where drivers come into their own, he's making sure that you actually deliver all the performance you have in the car. You rely on the driver getting you to the edge of the performance envelope, and he'll help you get there. He'll tell you what you need to do to make sure you give everything the car has to give. Can you ever quantify, in, in terms of tenths of a second, how much drivers are, are bringing? Or some drivers bring more than others, for example. I, I'm, I'm not so sure, to be honest. The, uh, each driver, wants a car that they're comfortable in uh, and that, that is the lap time itself. If they're comfortable, if they feel confident in the car, they'll push the car harder uh, and that's where you get the lap time. Um, so in terms of we need to do this X, Y and Z to the car, I, I, I think it's very much a, an evolutionary process. They drive the car, they give you feedback and then you work on the setup to, uh, to arrive at uh, a faster car. We can only surmise and guess what it's like to be a driver in a car at the end of the day. They're the people that are actually doing it. They're at the coalface every day out there on the track. Only they can actually feed you back that information. Um, so you try to encourage them to be very free and open with it. You know, and if that means them picking up the phone saying, I've thought about something, can we try this? Then that's what we're here to do at the end of the day. We look to the driver to give us a feel for where the car is, what he feels the car should be doing, reference what an ideal car is and also against our competitors where he feels we've got various deficiencies and how we'd like to improve them. The key thing is when you take your car out, you've, you know what the performance should be on paper. And what you're trying to do is realise that at the circuit. So the key thing the driver does is tell you whether you're going to get there and how you're going to get there. Which areas of the handling envelope he's a little bit nervous about, what you need to work on and improve. I mean, they can have quite a, an input throughout the whole car, um, even down to, you know, body work and aerodynamics, um, you know, things that they feel out there, um, you know, how, the, how the air is actually moving around them. How many tenths of a second would it make difference if, uh, if a driver is feeling comfortable, particularly comfortable or slightly uncomfortable? I think if the setup is off, then you're perhaps half a second away. Um, if a driver can, can have that extra little bit of confidence in the car, then you're looking at tenths per lap. A happy driver is a fast driver at the end of the day.